Hi, I'm Steve Clemens. I direct the foreign policy programs at the New America Foundation, and I write the blog, The Washington Note. And I'm here with Ken Ballin, president of an organization called Terror Free Tomorrow, and my colleague Flint Leverett from the New America Foundation, who heads our new Iran project and who is the director of the Geopolitics of Energy Initiative. The, the Terror Free Tomorrow and the New America Foundation have just released a new uh, poll on looking at pre Iran election results and what the public is thinking in Iran. It's a very rare kind of poll. The Associated Press and CNN both have articles out on, on this uh, as of today. And what's interesting about this is that you were able to use a different country, we won't disclose the country, to do a telephone poll. 90% of Iranian households apparently have landlines. And so you circumvented government controls to get out and have a chat with the Iranian public about how they saw the world. What are the big takeaways of the, of the poll results? The big takeaways is they see the world as wanting to engage with the world. They don't want to be isolated. They want to reach out uh, to the United States. They want better relations. They want to reach out to the other countries. They want trade. They want exchanges. They want to be part of the world community. Now, do, do you, they, they want this. If they do want this, why does your poll still show that they're so interested in President Ahmadinejad? They don't see um, uh, President Ahmadinejad as necessarily inconsistent with those goals. Uh, that is their view. Um, maybe they see him as a, as a strong negotiator for their side, or maybe they like him for other reasons, but they don't see his, him uh, as being inconsistent with their goals to a better relationship with the United States, a strong the United States as an ally, not just a better relationship. Uh, and uh, uh, more economic progress and more prosperity. I mean, you found that they want to have free press, uh, free and secure free elections, and what was really shocking is that, that they want to have um, the ability to elect the supreme leader. That really stuck out. That is, uh, you, you take away that, actually that's the bottom line, and that they're willing to say that in a poll. That is not their current system of government. They do not elect the supreme leader, the most powerful person, not the president. And the fact that they were willing to tell us over the phone, we want to vote. And this is the third time in two years they've said that, uh, almost 80 percent of them or more. So I think that's pretty indicative of, of a very strong desire and um, uh, an unwillingness to express it. Before I jump over to Flint to get his reactions, Another thing that stuck out on the poll is that 52% of Iranians want to continue or have a nuclear weapons program, weapons program, but they're willing, as I understand it, to forfeit that if uh, there is a respect for their interests, if, if there's a, a trade agreement with the United States, if there are other benefits that could come in. So they're willing to trade that away. But this is the first time I've ever seen the words weapons as opposed to the nuclear energy program, which we know every Iranian citizen seems to want, you know, as part of national pride. But, but this weapons thing really stood out. Well, I, I, I think you analyzed it correctly. I mean, I think um, we asked about energy and we asked about weapons and we made them two separate categories mm -hmm. so that we could get the distinction between energy and weapons because, as you know, one can lead to another. So uh, you accurately reflected that everybody wants energy. That's a, there's nobody who doesn't want that and a uh, majority even want nuclear weapons, but as you point out, they're, they're willing to trade that away. So they don't see that as a sacrosanct birthright or something that they would not be supportive of their government negotiating about. Flint, you've been the author um, of the grand bargain idea. Uh, it's, been, it's been talked about, written about, published so much of an approach, a, a, a Nixon goes to China change in U.S.-Iranian strategic relations. And you've made the case that the Iranian government, you believe, uh, wants that course. And you've been critical of the Obama administration in the New York Times most recently for not doing what needs to be done to get that railroad track laid. I'm interested, as you've looked at the poll results and as you look at the choices that, that the Iranians have, how do you look at this broader question of U.S.-Iran strategic uh, relations and what prospects there are to move on a better track? Well, I, I think that there is an, an elite consensus in Iran in favor of what I would describe as a U.S.-Iranian grand bargain, and what Ken's poll would suggest is that that elite consensus is reinforced by very strong currents in Iranian public opinion. Iranians, as we all know, uh, strongly support the, their nuclear energy program, but to the extent that this program might also give them a nuclear weapons option, the Iranian public, Ken's poll would suggest, are prepared to accept 
limits on the program that would that would uh, basically render impossible the the actual acquisition of nuclear weapons in return for substantial strategic benefits from the United States. Other aspects of Iranian foreign policy that Americans see as problematic, Iranians, the public, seems willing to support modifying those aspects of their, of their country's policies as part of a broader strategic understanding with the United States. Um, what it says to me is that what I see is this elite consensus about where Iranian foreign policy should go is actually fairly strongly reinforced by um, Iranian public opinion. What do you think about this question? We just had a program on this, that, that it really doesn't matter which of the leading candidates wins, either Mr. Mousavi or Mr. Ahmadinejad, and that, that fundamentally, unless the supreme leader begins to see a consistent, deeply thought out strategic opportunity on the U.S. side, that fundamentally the profile when it comes to the strategic questions will be absolutely uh, uh, the same no matter who was elected president. I think, I think that's right. Um, if you look at it in terms of foreign versus domestic policy, I think an Iranian president typically has more autonomy, more room for initiative, in for, for good or ill, in domestic I issues. And I, oh, think there there, is a difference between I think there are stronger, clearer differences be among the candidates on those kinds of issues. On foreign policy, I think that the differences among the candidates are more stylistic, mm -hmm. let's say, than substantive. And I think in the end, on the core issues of national security and foreign policy, decision making is done on a consensus basis in this forum called the Supreme National Security Council, and the Supreme Leader and his representatives have a not uh, you know absolutist control over that body, but they have very considerable influence um, over this consensus decision making. Final question. I mean, you were you were in the State Department. You were in the CIA. You uh, led the Middle East desk uh, for President Bush, first part of President Bush's term on the National Security Council. If you were to give me a percentage chance of Obama making Iran a Nixon goes to China moment and and succeeding, what would be the percentage <laughs> chance of, of success and likelihood that Obama would do this? Um, I, I think there's a one in five chance so that, that that he would actually be willing to do what he would need to do in order to have a kind of Nixon to China breakthrough with the Islamic Republic. Um, as an American, I hope I'm wrong about that. I hope I'm misunderestimating him. But um, while the rhetoric's been pretty good, um, I haven't seen real movement toward concrete policies that would back that up and get U.S.-Iranian relations moving. In, in 1969, 1970, might you have said a one in, one in five chance with President Nixon uh, doing China? Um, let's see. I, I was very young then, so uh, <laughs> hard, for me to, hard for me to say. Um, I, I actually, when I compare Nixon with Obama, I see Nixon as someone who was really focused on doing something different with, with China knew that 25 years of American policy had not worked to advance American interests, wanted something fundamentally different that would work. And his mode, though, was to work in secret with literally a handful of people on the National Security Council staff to rewrite our policy toward China and kind of inform the bureaucracy very late in the process. Um, I do not see President Obama moving in that way. And if you look at the foreign policy apparatus he's assembled to work on this issue, I think many of the key players are not nearly as forward-leaning um, in terms of where they'd like to go in Iran policy as the president is. Now, how he manages that is ultimately going to tell the tale. Uh, let me just conclude by saying that the Terror Free Tomorrow poll results are available in a few places. One at terrorfreetomorrow.org, also on uh, my blog, The Washington Note, uh, that, that has an expose on today's program, and also at the New America Foundation's American Strategy Program website. I'd also point to a CNN.com uh, commentary piece that Ken Ballin did with one of our colleagues, Amjad Atala, today, just came out called Iranians Favor Peace Deal with the United States. Ken, congratulations. Thank Thanks you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Steve.